Hello everybody, this is Ang Zichi and you can call me Ben. <laughs> Damn it! Hey everybody, my name is Ang Zichi and you can call me Ben. Today I'm back with another video, like finally, after one year of hiatus, where the f was I man? Probably being depressed in a corner, somewhere around the world. Help. Before we head into the video, don't forget to slam that like button because it will help this video out a lot when it comes to with like the whole mumbo jumbo of the YouTube algorithm uh, of the YouTube algorithm. And also don't forget to subscribe. Last time I checked, I remember like only 16% who are subscribed watches my videos. The rest of you, what are you waiting for? Let me ask you a question, uh, are you a Nike fan? Oh you are? Just do it. <laughs> Now with that out of the way, let's finally jump into the video. In today's video, I'd like to share with you guys how I spend my free time on Twitch creating a simplistic motion graphic infinite loop film strip, which I actually used in my own Twitch stream. And yes, your boy here streams on Twitch. Follow me on Twitch if you haven't. And if you already followed my Twitch, you're probably aware that I actually made a similar video on Twitch where I was basically doing the same thing for content creation purposes. I stream Genshin Impact, I stream stuff about editing videos, maybe motion graphics are mostly, and occasionally I do Photoshop there as well. Mainly because I am lazy to edit videos, and I'm busy to edit videos. Mainly lazy. As you all may already know, I am a digital film production student. I study film at my university. I graduated, but I'm not working in a job that has is, has anything related to film. But more on that story in another video lah. So the idea of film, film strip, is like a very appealing thing for me to have when I was tr thinking of what theme should I go for for my Twitch stingers, for my Twitch background, for my Twitch uh, anything, assets. Definitely filming in general really appeals to me ah, the look of the film stretch. In this tutorial, I'll be using two softwares. Both are from the Adobe CC package. I'll be using one, uh, Adobe Illustrator, and two, Adobe After Effects for this tutorial. Of course, you can also use Photoshop as well if you are much more familiar with that program. Huh? Adobe ah? Eh, I don't have Adobe eh. I know money. Can you like, tell me where to find ah? Uh, I don't know man. I really don't know, I paid for my software, so pay for your software please. But if you are looking for some alternatives, I'll have some logos splattered around the screen for ya, and probably leave some links in the description as well. Once you pick your favourite shade of grey, put them aside so you can refer to them later with a colour picker. Next, you can create a placeholder rectangle. For me, because the main screen I use for my streams is a 22 by 9 screen, it's an LG screen by the way, that's why my placeholder rectangle is that aspect ratio. Of course, for your case, because most likely, if you were to use this for your stream, or you're gonna use it for your own videos as an overlay, you can just more or less pick a aspect ratio that suits you, maybe a cinematic aspect ratio like 21 by 9 or you want to do it vertically, 4x3, it's up to you as well, or 1x1. One one. Yes, so with whatever you want to make in mind, make sure you of course create a placeholder box for yourself, so that you can use it as a guide box. It's basically a guide layer, so that when you create your asset, it looks proper. Don't forget, placeholder items are very important because it allows you to be organized. And of course, as you can see over here, I put placeholder boxes of, I use green because it's like, Film, green screen, ha. Huh. <laughs> you can use blue as well, blue screen. Or you can use magenta or any other color that is not your main colors and it helps you know that that is a guide layer. Not only your main screen has to be placeholder, don't forget that the distance between your boxes also needs to have a guide layer so that you know that they are properly distanced because it will help you a ton when it comes to animating them in a loop in After Effects. Yes, guide layers are very important, but guess what? Surprise! I'm horrible at math. So, as you can see, it's not a line. Ah. Hiya. But fear not, because there's this button over here called the distribute center button. You just have to highlight every box on the strip. Make sure you unselect the back black background and the other placeholder stuff, and you distribute center. And voila! We're done! Sao Kong! Bye! Wait, not yet, wait! Chotomate! You haven't done the bottom part yet. 
I know it's more fun to do it once again, 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 again. But you don't have to be so hardworking. It's not always about working hard. You sometimes you have to work smart. That's why those boxes that are already selected, right? All you have to do is Control C, Control F. That's right. Copy and paste. Why not Control V? If you didn't notice, Control V actually duplicates the thing, but it offsets your thing, whatever that thing is. I'm not sure about Photoshop or other programs, but in Illustrator, if you Control F, your copy, it actually duplicates the thing on top of your copied item. So all you have to do is drag the boxes down and voila, you have a film strip now. Now that that's done, you can turn off your guide layers and export the image. Honestly, because I'm just going to make it loop, an image would be fine because uh, you can export a high, relatively high resolution image. So once you have done exporting the image, throw it into After Effects. And that's where the magic happens. So now that your PNG or your JPEG is in After Effects, duplicate that image and drag it off screen. Make sure the edges are touching with each other and then pair the off-screen image onto the on-screen image. Now that they are paired, when you move your position x-axis, both the images are connected and it saves you a ton of time. After that, set a keyframe and then drag your playhead all the way to the end and set another keyframe over there and move your x-axis all the way to the second strip until it fully fills the box, your screen, your composition. That was what I was looking for, that word. And with that, play the render, and you get a fully functional motion graphic infinite loop film strip. Of course, feel free to adjust your speed of your motion as well. You can make it faster and slower by either increasing the duration of your composition or you can be just slightly lazy like me by trial and error, just do it over and over again until it looks perfect in a loop. Now that it's done, feel free to use it anywhere you like. Yes, this may not be the most advanced motion graphics video you have ever watched, but everyone's gotta start somewhere, right? Even me. I do have plans to post more tutorials in the coming months, maybe once a month. Of course, with a little bit of other content as well, but mainly because the main purpose of this channel, why I created this channel in the first place was because I wanted to share my experiences. So see it as a way of myself logging my skills at this point in time so that in the future in the next five years in the next 10 years when i watch back these videos and i look at myself i'll be like wow look at how far i've come if i have not uploaded this video i probably would never improve so uploading videos making tutorials sometimes forces me to you know practice improve on my own skill sets so that somehow People like you who are starting in After Effects and wanting to try something simple can also watch something simple like this and learn from it as well. And with that said, I hope that this video provided educational and entertainment value to you. If you like this video, don't forget to slam the like button and remember to subscribe. Don't forget to check out the other videos as well. And I would hopefully see you next time. Janet.